Now, if you were driving on a road which had no signs, traffic lights, or even curbs, would it instinctively make you slow down and drive more carefully? Well, that's the idea behind so-called shared spaces, which reduce the segregation between pedestrians, cyclists and cars. However, the schemes have been criticised for being difficult to navigate for people with disabilities. Jamie Coven is at one of these areas in Cheshire for us this morning. Morning, Jane. Good morning to you. Yeah, it's a really pretty place here in Poynton, but it's not far from Manchester Airport and on the route through Cheshire into Manchester, so it gets very, very busy. Have a look around here. And uh, this is where four roads meet. And what you'll notice is all the things that aren't here that ordinarily tell motorists and pedestrians where they should be, when they should move, when they shouldn't move, when it's safe to go. And the, the question we're asking this morning is this. Does that make this area a whole heap safer, ease traffic congestion, or is it discriminatory to a, a, a significant sector of the local community? Have a look at this. Well, that public consultation goes on until October the 12th. The Women in Equality Committee really want to hear from uh, everybody out there, their experience of shared space. Let's meet now the architect, the key architect of shared space in the UK, Ben Hamilton Bailey. Thanks for joining us. This is your baby here in Poynton, isn't it? What we saw in the film, though, was that over in London, in Sloane Square, that was a road that was being treated as a road by any other name, but with all of those safety aspects stripped out. Mm. I mean, I wasn't involved in that scheme, but I, I, I know it is a very small area, probably a bit too small, really, for the circumstances. It needs the key to Poynton is that we've not just treated this space, but way back on the approaches, as soon as you enter the village, drivers are thoroughly aware of a completely different atmosphere. This is a village. And the degree of ambiguity means that drivers are fully alert, not only to their surroundings, but, of course, to pedestrians. So you're talking here about... Let's have a look behind you. You're talking here about the way the tiles there kind of make the road appear more narrow than it actually is. We've taken five lanes down to two lanes, and you're saying that makes motorists there's, slow there's, right down. There's an enormous numbers of detail here, down to the kerb detail, which we... We looked at very carefully with local blind and disabled people. Well, let's 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 focus on that right now. Tell me, put yourself in a blind person's shoes right now. How on earth would you navigate this road with no audio signals sure. in rush hour? Yeah, I mean, just as with the zebra crossing, one has to. There's a degree of negotiation. Mind your back there. Well, I, I saw a I, lorry I, let's take the edge off yeah, here yeah, before sure. because there's no pavement. Sure. Yeah, but what you one can hear because of the awareness of drivers of where we are. You can simply cross over this road. Okay. Well, there's no cars here now, but you're, what you're talking about is a blind person making a leap of faith in the hope, let me bring you back, in the hope that the traffic no, will have it, noticed because it. Because it works. Just like in, in, uh, in a zebra crossing... Uh, you can't guarantee can it, though, can you? It is ambiguous. Let's... Do you see? I yeah. think... Well, yeah. listen, let's go and chat to Chris Hall over here. Um, Bit of a hairy moment there. Chris, you are a solicitor representing people who are taking legal challenges because you believe this is discriminatory. Yeah, I mean, this is a, a, a beautiful space and it works brilliantly well for traffic. But it's also quite scary. You know, whilst we've been stood here, cars have been driving over the roundabouts, cutting the curb here because there's no difference between yeah, the. Yeah, Laurie did and that just curb. a second ago, yeah. Um, it works for motorists, but it doesn't work if you're blind or deaf blind because how do you know where it's safe to cross? So what we say is the Equality Act requires service providers and, you know, the road is a service provided by a local authority to make reasonable adjustments to make sure that the space is accessible and inclusive for everybody. OK, well, we're going to be chatting lots more about this throughout the morning. Join us in about an hour's time. Back to you. Thanks very much. Some hairy moments there. Yes. Do, do you think we need to say that walking backwards across the road generally is not the... Uh... It's, just, I, I, it's never good, is it? It's not I, the right I would way to hope go. our viewers know that. But, uh, we, yeah, we don't need don't, to say that. 6.27 is the time now. Back with Jane later on. It'll be a bit lighter later on. We'll get more of a sense of, of how it works or doesn't work. And busier with more mm -hmm. traffic as well. It's Cars, bikes, pedestrians, all sharing the same piece of tarmac. And no one has a right of way. Would that be chaos? Or would it be a way to get drivers to slow down? Well, the idea is called a shared space. Its advocates say that it means that roads will be safer. The scheme, though, has been criticised for being difficult to navigate for people with disabilities. Yes, Jamie Coven is at one of these areas. This is in Cheshire for us. And, it, Jane, it's interesting, isn't it? You, can you give us a sense of how this thing works? 
Yeah, definitely. Uh, good morning from Poynton. The sun is coming up, as, as is the traffic. We're getting into busy rush hour now. This is on the mains through to through Cheshire, through to Manchester, not far from Manchester Airport. This used to be five lanes of traffic coming down here. In fact, five lanes of traffic coming from every direction. It's now been narrowed down to just two lanes of traffic. And what you'll notice is that all of the road markings, the signage, the traffic light has been stripped out. The idea is it changes the psychology of motorists to be more aware of what is going on around him. The question is, has that made things better? Has it eased congestion? Is it safer? Or has it discriminated against large sections of society? Well, the, the Women and Equality Committee wants to hear as many people out there get in touch with them and tell them what they think of shared space. Does it work for them? Let's, let me introduce now one of the key architects of shared space in the UK, Ben Hamilton Bailey. It's been a funny old morning, Ben, because a, a cyclist has just fallen off the bike while that film was on. Uh, a, a huge lorry took the corner off this pavement in our, just before our last live hit. Two cars nearly hit you before on the side of the pavement. It, people watching might wonder, is this really safe? Well, it's been in place for four years now, and it's certainly no more unsafe than it was before. If you'd seen this place in 2008, it was a miserable place to cross, whether you were able-bodied or disabled. It was five lanes of fast traffic, huge volumes of cars and lorries, having to come to Poynton. It's far too many for a town of this kind. C certainly people that I've spoken to here have said that it is, it is better. However, I've also spoken to people like Lord Holmes, like many other people who say, no, chaos, anarchy. What, how would you cross, well, how would you navigate this yeah. road if you were fully blind? Yeah. Well, we worked very closely with blind and, and disabled people who lived here in Poynton. But and how would you, to literally demonstrate, how on earth would you, there's no audio well, signal? Well, there's a, there's a curb here, first of all, a very, a very, very clear curb. Very, very shallow curb that many sticks don't pick up. Sure, but, the, but we, we tested this very carefully with local people, and this was the design that they helped us produce. And here, obviously, the, there's very generous wide markings. But it is a see. leap of faith, is it not, for a blind person to step Well, the to key to this here. is that the speeds are much much okay. lower. Okay. And once you've got drivers aware and alert to the pedestrians, as happens here, then it's possible to cross the road because speeds are sufficiently down and drivers are looking out for pedestrians. And OK. We're going to have to leave it there. Now. We're going to have to leave it there. I just want to introduce you very briefly back to um, Chris Fry over here. We haven't got time to talk to, but Chris is listening in. He believes that this is, in one word, it's discriminatory. It's discriminatory. He's a solicitor and he's going to be chatting to us in an hour's time. More on that then. Back to you. Jane, thanks very much. You know, lots of you have been getting in touch as well. Um, Benners has said there's a shared space in Felixstowe. We've had an incident where a car hit a pram. It caused a fight to break out. Doug said in, Hacksbury, in Hackbridge uh, there was a shared place, space developed. It was a disaster and it cost thousands to put it back to a normal road. Yes, and Cathy says that that's important in the one we've just seen there. And she's been there. She says, believe it or not, everyone becomes much more considerate, slows down. To be honest, we've watched it quite closely this morning. Mm. That's not kind of not what we've seen, really. But um, she says it is a very safe environment because everyone's looking out for each other. Garth's a fan as well. He says when the traffic lights fail, there are a few accused of traffic. Everything keeps moving better. No traffic signals there. The traffic was flowing. Keep your thoughts coming in. It's good to hear from you. So, cars, bikes, pedestrians, all sharing the same piece of tarmac and no one has a right of way. Would that be chaos or would it be a way to get drivers to slow down? The idea of all of this together is a shared space and its advocates say it leads to safer roads. But the scheme has been criticised for being difficult to navigate for people with disabilities. Yes, we're seeing how it works in practice this morning because uh, Jamie Cubbon is at one of those areas in Cheshire for us where they've changed everything. It's, quite, it's a pretty busy junction, that one there, isn't it, Jane? It, it is a very busy junction, but you can see behind me that the traffic's moving fairly freely this morning during rush hour. Didn't used to be like this. This shared space is about changing the psychology of motorists, changing the road layout, trying to reclaim some of this space for pedestrians. But the question we're asking this morning is, does it work for everybody? Well, that public... That public consultation is being carried out by the Women and Equalities Committee. They want as many people as possible to get in touch with them and tell them their own experience of shared space. 
which is meant to make things move easier, breathe new life into areas like this. But the, the question is, does it work for absolutely everybody? Let's chat now to Sarah Gator. Sarah, you are a campaigner. This has been your kind of baby championing the, the problems with this. You've taken your case to the House of Lords to try and get some changes. Why? Because the fundamental theory of shared space is just not working. There's been five people killed in these schemes, numerous trip accidents with invisible curbs, and numerous blind people and visually impaired people and disabled people have told me they have stopped going into these schemes or need sighted assistance. OK, but th there is one death on our roads every day of the year. Is it not time for a kind of bold new vision of how things might look by making motorists that bit more aware and conscientious about what's going on around them? Well, actually, if you actually look at the accident rates in these shared spaces, in Ashford in Kent, there's actually there's been six serious accidents now in the shared space area before there was only one. If you look at South End on Sea shared space scheme, there's more serious accidents. So if you actually start looking at the data and the five deaths in these schemes, you will see the actual theory is not delivering in reality. I think there's a, there's a lot of um, disagreement about that data, is there not? I know Ashford in Kent put out a stat that it was 41% safer, but that has been discredited in itself. You firmly believe, though, that, that there is a section of society excluded from these spaces, like Lord Holmes. Oh, definitely. I met Lord Holmes in 2011 with a build-up to the London 2012 Paralympic Games. He totally inspired me. And when they had this scheme in Leek, my hometown in Staffordshire, all I could think about is that if this scheme would basically design him, who amazing gentleman, but all the other blind people out of their high street. Let's 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 move across now and talk to Ben Bailey Thompson. You are one of the chief architects of these designs, and it's true, is it not, that many of these designs now are being retrofitted? They're having the safety features put back in. One of those designs, yours as well. Well, I'm not I'm not the architect for every shared space, and I can't defend those. Yeah. But this scheme has been in place for four years now. Is infinitely better than the scheme, than the, than the situation that existed before. But we work extensively with blind people and disabled people who live here in Poynton, and they hated the, the way it was before. Now they tell us they greatly prefer it because the traffic's moving much slower and, and drivers are aware, and there's much better balance between pedestrians. Okay disabled people, vulnerable pedestrians we're gonna, and traffic. We're going to have to wrap this up, but it is being taken to the courts right now. There are legal challenges underway, and the question they will try to get to the bottom of, is this discriminatory against people like people like Lord Holmes? Back to you in the studio. Jane, thank you very much. It's been very interesting watching that experiment there, hasn't it? Mm. Lots of you getting in touch with your views as well. We'll read some of those out a little later.